Do you ever feel like there's just not enough hours in the day to get everything done, let alone have time left to practice and also improve your worship guitar skills? Look, I know that feeling all too well between work and family and church commitments, it can be tough to find the time to really dedicate to our passion for playing. But what if I told you that you can make some significant progress on the guitar, even with a packed schedule? That's why in this video, I'm going to share with you five game-changing techniques that will help you to maximize your practice sessions and also level up your guitar grows no matter how busy you are. These are the same strategies that I've used to go from a rusty part-time player to becoming a confident worship guitarist. And I can't wait to share these with you. So go ahead, grab your guitar, and let's dive right in. So first of all, you wanna set clear and achievable goals. Because if you don't know what you want, then you won't make good use of the little time that you have available. That's why it's useful to go ahead and break down long-term goals into smaller milestones and also to focus on specific techniques or songs that you wanna practice. And then finally, creating a realistic practice schedule that will fit your busy lifestyle. Next up, you wanna learn how to utilize micro practice sessions. So when done correctly, you can actually improve more by practicing less. So how does this work? Well, to take advantage of short breaks throughout the day, you can go ahead and get some practice time in. You don't need to have these big, long, open 60 minute gaps in your day in order to practice. That's why it's useful to practice in five or 10 minute bursts to maintain some focus. That might not sound like much, but when you have a focused and an intentional five to 10 minutes, that can do way more for your growth as a guitarist than an hour of uninspired noodling around on the guitar. And then something else is you can incorporate guitar practice into daily activities. For example, watching TV or waiting for appointments. For example, if you've got your electric guitar with you, you might just wanna do some technique exercises to kind of get your left and right hands synchronized while watching TV. It's soft enough not to be a distraction to your family watching along with you. And it's still useful to kind of get that repetitive nature in when it comes to programming muscle memory. And if you work in a digital environment where you might have a couple of minutes in between Zoom calls or appointments, make sure that your guitar is within reach. You can just grab it play a few things, even just at more frequent playing and practicing, even if it's for short bursts of time, will be useful and helpful. Another thing that you can do is to prioritize quality over quantity. You see the quality of your practice session, that's gonna matter more than the length and the quantity of practice sessions. What does that mean? Well, when you concentrate on deliberate and focused practice rather than mindless repetition, you are gonna make way more progress, especially if you put those into those short chunks. You also wanna break down challenging passages into smaller manageable chunks. I remember one year we did the Lincoln Brewster song Miraculum at our Christmas service, and there were quite a couple of interesting lead guitar lines. And instead of me trying to learn the whole song in one go, I just kind of identified the different sections that I need to pay some more attention to, and I practiced those parts on their own by breaking down those challenging passages into those smaller manageable chunks. When I was zeroing in on what's really happening in my playing, I could then go ahead and put together some exercises in my practice sessions that helped me overcome whatever I needed to do in order to play those passages nice and smoothly. You also wanna go ahead and use a metronome in your practice sessions and develop some solid rhythm and timing in your playing. You see, we might be busy, so we don't have a lot of time to practice. So when you do actually practice, you wanna make sure that you're working on your timing and your feel. That's one of the most important things that you can have as a musician, because without even learning any new skills, just improving your timing and your sense of feel will really make a big difference. And that's where using a metronome comes into play because the metronome never lies and it's gonna show you where you are maybe weak as it relates to some of your skills within the confines of consistent timing. Something else that will help you to get more out of your practice sessions is learning how to leverage technology for some efficient learning. One way that you can do that is using online guitar tutorials and lessons for targeted skill development. That's what we do at our Worship Guitar Skills Academy is we've got what we call the specific Worship Guitar Skills Challenges, which we run from time to time 
and then help people to put together practice plans that help them overcome specific challenges as it relates to a worship guitar. So that's another way when you have a little bit amount of time to practice, you want to make sure that you have tutorials and practice plans to go ahead and help you overcome whatever scaps that you have in your skill. Something else that's super useful is to record yourself playing uh, to identify some areas for improvement. Again, if you only have limited time to spend, you wanna spend it in the areas that matter. And when you record yourself, you can actually see, you know what? I really need to work more on my strumming and my timing, or I might need to work more on my string muting because I've got some idle strings ringing out and kind of messing up my tone. When you don't record yourself, you don't have this awareness of those areas in which you want to improve. And then again, you can't really be making the most of your playing. So technology that exists to record yourself, whether it's a camera, whether it's just audio, is super useful to identify areas for improvement. And then finally, use some kind of guitar apps and software to track your progress and stay motivated. For example, you get some AI apps these days that will help you to identify and isolate different parts within a song to go ahead and listen to that, or something like the multi-tracks rehearsal mix where you can go ahead, pull up a song, and actually just listen to the recordings of the guitar parts, or listen more closely and intently to what the drums and bass is doing. And then you can use that in what I call active listening when not with your guitar. So maybe you're driving to work, maybe you are somewhere where you can listen to music, then actively listen to worship songs, whether it's a song in its entirety or whether it's isolated tracks, it will help you to the next time when you pick up your guitar, then the song is more familiar to you and not just the song, but the specific parts. And then something else to help you get more out of the limited time that you've got is to collaborate and learn from others. When you play with other musicians, regularly it's going to help you to get some real world experience especially if you do that at a worship team rehearsal then you can go in and put all the skills into work during a live session like that you learn so much more by spending that time there than what you will do just playing on your own in your bedroom practicing guitar so playing with others to get some real world experience is really, really important. You also wanna be connecting with other worship guitarists for accountability and support, and then share some fresh ideas and get some fresh perspectives and inspiration. I mean, we all know the power of accountability and support. We might say that we don't have time, we are too busy for this, that, and the next thing, but if there's somebody that's on the journey with us, supporting us, and that we can have some accountability to, your brain is gonna find some pockets of time to go ahead and make some improvement. And it's always good to get a fresh perspective from how other people see the fretboard or tone or whatever the case may be. And through that, be inspired to go ahead and work on your worship guitar skills. And then when you participate in online guitar communities, you can also do this virtually to exchange some ideas and also get some feedback. That's one of the things that we do at our Worship Guitar Skills Academy, in addition to the curriculum that we have that addresses all the different areas of growth, as well as the coaching that we give our members on Fridays, where we can give them feedback on their playing. We also have a community of online guitar players that live in all different parts of the world, but they are able to connect with each other, get some support, find some inspiration and accountability, and that makes a very big difference. If you wanna find out more about that, we'll leave some links in the description. So there you have it folks. Those are five powerful techniques that will help you maximize your guitar practice times and make some significant progress with your skills and ability, even with a busy schedule. And remember, it's not just about the quantity of time that you spend practicing, but it's about the quality and the intentionality behind each session. If you're looking to take your practice to the next level and develop a targeted routine that fits your unique goals and lifestyle, be sure to check out this video on developing a targeted practice routine for maximum growth. And then of course, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more Worship Guitar content designed to help you grow in your craft and lead your congregation in powerful, heartfelt worship. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, share some of your favorite practice hacks or let me know what other topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. God bless and happy practicing.